Hello there. <clears throat> My name is Christopher Melkis. You know me on Twitter as Teen Methuselah, formerly known as Synthite. And I wanted to talk to you today about one of the most recent controversies surrounding the D&D 5th edition, or simply D&D, as I know the developers of this new edition would like for it to be called. This controversy that I'm speaking of, if you're not familiar, is around one of the passages in the new digital PDF basic D&D, uh, which was given away for free, a uh, brilliant marketing tactic on the part of Wizards of the Coast and the developers of the new edition. Uh, perhaps not quite the brilliant move that everyone says it is, because in the past they have given away uh, the system documents, the SRD as it was called, uh, for free that you could look up online and use instantly to create a very basic version of their version of D&D. But this is a complete D&D game for free. It's not just the system reference document, which was pretty heavily limited. This is the full thing, which I guess is a much bigger deal, and, and props to them for doing this. But, of course, no good deed goes unpunished. There is a passage in that system document uh, that talks about making a character strictly uh, in terms of background information for your character. Uh, this passage uh, addresses your character's gender identity uh, and sexual identity, uh, which is something that was rarely touched on in past editions. Um, and I don't really know that that was necessarily a bad thing. Uh, but I also know that them bringing it up in this new document is definitively a good thing, uh, which is surprising because I'm seeing a lot of reactions, of course, on Facebook, because where else would those kind of reactions come from, about how bad having that thing in the book is. Uh, which, sorry, not the book, the PDF. Uh, it's yet to be seen whether the book itself will contain that passage. Um, I assume it's going to. I don't think Wizards' current developers are going to uh, backpedal on this to avoid backlash, uh, even if the book itself has already been criticized for being too expensive, which is exactly what everyone said when 4th edition released their books as well. <laughs> so I, you, you really can't win uh, with those book prices, uh, even when you give away the basic game for free. But addressing the original topic, uh, there's a Facebook thread. Let me let me jump to it real quick, and I will read some of the reactions that I've gotten. Uh, the one that uh, sort of kicked the whole thing off uh, was somebody posting about it, um, and the original post uh, didn't seem to be too particularly uh, for or against it. But as I looked at the comments, um, I noticed that. Uh, some people seem to be dismissive of it in the sense that they didn't feel like it was needed to be included. Um, and that might be true, but the comments pretty quickly dissolved from this didn't need to be included to including this in the book is a act of political correctness that proves that the developers are idiots. Like, my favorite is this guy, um, I'm calling him out, Mark Fanelli, F-A-N-E-L-L-I. Uh, says, I'm not sure what is being pumped into the air where these people, quote, plan, unquote, all this crap, but it has to be bad for you. You think they may have learned something from the debacle that was 4th edition, but apparently not, which someone responded with, seriously, dot, dot, dot. Um, and then the original poster uh, responded to that um, with the following comment, I'm still unsure of the point of including it role-playing slash non-mechanical stats and quirks are and have been for years run successively by players. I have nothing against folks role-playing gnomes who dress up as dwarves, but there is no need to include it in a book. It takes a bit away from the originality of someone's character idea to have every option laid bare as a selection list. I have no idea how to respond to that without being outraged, uh, because I don't think these people remember what it was like to originally play D&D, to originally come into the, the game. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and speak for myself here. Uh, 
I don't know, again, what their experiences were when they first joined it or what age they were, but let me, let me just talk about not just my experience coming into D&D, but the experiences that I've seen having run D&D at the local comic book shop nearly every week as part of the D&D Encounters program and also outside of it. Uh, so uh, talking about my own experience, uh, I came into D&D through uh, a family member that uh, I married into, I shouldn't say I married into, but that uh, my father married into. And this family um, had a, an aunt, Aunt Deb, who introduced me to um, the Dragonlance uh, games the D and D it was actually it wasn't D and D. I can't quite remember the name of the system off the top of my head. Um, it's quite some time since I've ever even seen anyone uh, mention it, much less play it. But it was the uh, Dragonlance games uh, that used a very different D and D system that first introduced me to the world of Dungeons and Dragons because I had read the Dragonlance saga, um, the first four books. And they sort of <clears throat> segued from those books into that. And I was still uh, in, I want to say, junior year of high school when I discovered, I should say, when I was introduced to this. Um, and I had just started sort of figuring out who I was because <clears throat> I had grown up out in this really white, very uh, non-diverse, boring uh, suburb out, way out, way out from St. Louis where I live now and I didn't really have any role models or any um, you know any you know real roles to look at um, and to figure out uh, who I was and what I wanted and I, I, having moved to uh, St. Louis at that time I was sort of starting to figure these things out um, and I'm not saying that you know the freedom of D&D necessarily helped me figure things out, but I think that um, as I was introduced more and more to the world of role playing, uh, starting with that and then in uh, senior year of high school, joining a uh, weekly uh, World of Darkness, Old World of Darkness, uh, Vampire the Masquerade and Werewolf the Apocalypse group, uh, which again, we met just about every week and I developed a pretty strong circle of friends around that who were all also very diverse. Um, just seeing how uh, free and easy and calm and relaxed and accepting everyone was of, of different uh, sexualities and personalities and attitudes um, really helped me become more relaxed and more comfortable with who I was. Um, and really, that was right around the time I start, first started like playing and writing gay and bisexual characters. Um, and really, m my first gay role-playing character came out of a, a game of, of World of Darkness. Um, and that was a pretty big moment, even if it wasn't a huge, important part of that character's personality. Uh, it definitely wasn't. In fact, he was a Nosferatu, which in the World of Darkness are hideous uh, and generally loathed by everyone and everything because of how horrible they are. And yet the character was bisexual because, you know, he was fun to have him hitting on everyone, uh, regardless of gender, um, playing up, of course, the fact that he was not attractive at all. Uh, so that was sort of like my segue into discovering more about myself thanks to role-playing games. And that carried on into um, the games of D&D that I didn't just play but ran. Um, so many of the NPCs that I created for my fourth edition and 3.5 and Pathfinder games didn't fit into any easy mold. I mean, some of them did, obviously, but a lot of them were, um, you know, uh, m uh, multisexual. Um, they didn't have any easy identifiable genders at times. I, I just didn't want to um, give players the impression that their worlds that my worlds, <clears throat> the world of D&D that I was running, was consistent with ours, that I wanted it to be fantasy and that there could be all this sexual freedom and, and um, no uh, gender restrictions and things like that, because it was a fantasy. And, you know, I felt like having been, you know, aware of, of the uh, repression and oppression that, you know, our reality has towards you know, that sort of attitude and those uh, alternative uh, lifestyles and sexualities, I didn't want that to be true for my fantasy worlds. But this was stuff that, you know, was 
of my own initiative. There was nothing in the books that told me I could do this. And there was always a sense of, I'm not doing this the way the creators intended. You know, they, there was always this idea in the back of everyone's minds that, you know, we could never be sure if this was something that the creators would be comfortable with. Um, it's kind of the equivalent of, like, taking, um, you know, a story that someone has written and changing the characters' sexualities for your own um, enjoyment. Uh, <clears throat> to interpret those characters the way you see fit, and then not really being sure if the creators would be happy with that or unhappy with that. Um, so that's not to say that it stopped me, uh, because it was the people that surrounded me that made the game fun anyway. It really didn't matter too much what the creators thought, but it also was a matter, especially as I got older, of feeling like I was supporting the right thing by doing this. And now we're seeing that the creators of D&D are really boldly stepping forward and saying that the creators, the developers of D&D 5th edition, want players to know that they support that. You know, this, this is their way of officially making a stand against um, oppression and discrimination. You know, this is their way of saying that, you know, you are allowed to do and be whatever you want in our fantasy world, and you are not restricted to heteronormative structures. Uh, and that's an, an incredibly important thing to me, and I will tell you that it's just as important to a lot of the players that have joined my games at the comic book shop, because many of them are people who are looking for an escape, you know, because that's what D&D is about. It's an escape. I mean, there's a lot of people, I'm sure, who play it, because they want a game. And that's great because I play it because I want a game too, but that's only half of the equation. I'm playing a game and I'm playing um, something that brings me into a fantasy world of imagination that is far more, um, you know, interesting, uh, I think, than reality, you know. And that's, some people would say it's a pretty pessimistic attitude and that discounts that, you know, I do, you know, enjoy quite a bit of the real world, but I think you know, it's good to have something to get out of it occasionally from. Um, and I'm really glad that now that players can look at this this document and this and say, you know, I can do this. There's nothing stopping me from doing this anymore. There's no neutrality. You know, it's it's being uh, it's the difference between and this is this is really getting down to the core of the problem. It's the difference between somebody saying, you can play my game. Um, and not having anything to say about that issue and then instead now saying you can play my game and it doesn't matter who you want to be or who you are you're welcome to play my game it's the difference between open arms and not having any kind of position at all uh, and that's a positive no matter how you look at it and I think that the fact that it's such a small note and yet there's people who take offense to it for some reason uh, is crazy. It doesn't doesn't address you. It's not your problem. Uh, why you feel the need to um, perpetuate this this um, you know uh, negative attitude? Um, and I mean, you can say, oh, I'm accepting. You know, I'm not I'm not biased against it. I'm not um, discriminating. But the fact that you have taken umbrage with it, that you think, oh, it doesn't need to be in there, indicates how close-minded you are about it. Um, that you don't think that you don't essentially that you don't think that people who are struggling with those problems need open arms because they do, and I will tell you from experience that they do. Um, so you know, reconsider, think about what it's like to be that person, and then see that that passage in this book that basically says you are welcome, whereas previously that was never there. It's a huge step forward, um, and I think that people have forgotten that, and so this is just a reminder. Thank you for listening.